Sometimes when you model objects, you want them to interact with each other as they would in the real world. That's where rigid body physics can help. In this Blender video, I'll demonstrate how I set up these objects to interact with each other. The results look pretty close to reality. After setting up this animation, we'll make it more complex and set up this animation. I'll be using Blender version 3.1.2 for this video. We'll start with these objects. When I first started working on this project, I scaled all of the objects to be actual size. For example, I set the size of the balls to be approximately one inch in diameter. When I did this, the balls tended to slide rather than roll, and I was not able to get them to bounce properly. So instead of scaling everything smaller, I now use the default size for the ball, which is two meters, and I scaled everything else accordingly. Since everything is modeled larger than life, I need to speed up the time scale to make it appear smaller. To do that, switch to the Scene tab, open the Rigid Body World, click Add Rigid Body World, and set the speed to 2.5. Since everything is scaled up in size, distant objects like the edge of this floor may get clipped while in camera view. To change the clipping distance, select the camera and from the Object Data tab, increase the Clip End value. I'm going to increase it to 200. When using rigid body physics, we set up objects to be active or passive. Active objects move and passive objects do not. We'll set up the passive objects first. So select the top front rod, switch to the physics tab, and click the rigid body button. Set the type to passive. The default collision shape is convex hull. We'll keep this setting for now. Now open the surface response section and set the friction and bounciness values to one. Next, we'll apply these rigid body settings to all of the other passive objects. So select all of the passive objects, including the floor. Then hold down shift and click the rod that we just set up once or twice so that it's the last object in the group that's selected. The last object selected is the active object and it's outlined with a lighter orange color. Now from the object menu, select rigid body and click copy from active. Next, we'll set up these three balls to be active objects since we want them to move. So select the bottom ball and click the rigid body button. The type should be set to active. The default mass value is okay. Make sure dynamic is checked, which will enable the rigid body simulation for the object. Also make sure that animated is unchecked. We'll be looking at this setting a little later. Now set the friction value to one. If you click the play button, you can see what this looks like so far. As you can see, the ball doesn't bounce. When I was preparing this project, I wanted the ball to have a small bounce off of this end board and another slight bounce when it hits these two rods. It was actually kind of tricky to get the effect that I wanted, but after experimenting with two different values, I achieved a nice result. The first value is in the physics properties. I ended up using a bounciness value of 0.5, but this alone wasn't enough. If I play it, there's not enough bounce. The other value is in the scene properties. By reducing the sub steps per frame to three, I achieved the results that I wanted. This is what it looks like when I play it. You can see that it bounces off the sideboard and there is a very slight bounce off of the two rods. Reducing sub steps per frame produces a less accurate simulation, but in this case, it's just what I needed. Now let's apply these physics settings to the other two balls. So select the other two balls first, then select the ball that we just set up. Then from the object menu, select rigid body and click copy from active. Now when I play it, all three balls move. Next, let's bake it. So from the Scene tab, open the Cache section and click Bake All Dynamics. Now I'll render the animation. This is what the rendered animation looks like. If you don't know how to render an animation, you can watch my video on the topic. I put a link to it in the video description. When we set this up, we made all of the pieces of this wooden frame passive objects, which means that they won't move. But what if we want the frame to move as a single unit, like in this animation? I'll show you how to do this. 
First, I'll click Delete All Bakes. To make the frame move as a single unit, we need to join the objects together. So I'll select all of these objects. I don't want the floor to be included, and so I'll deselect it. I'll make this top front cylinder the active object by shift clicking it. Now right click and select Join. Now that these are joined together, switch to the Physics tab and set the rigid body type to active. When I play this, you'll see that the balls just bounce and roll on the top. That's because the shape is set to convex hull. So change the shape to mesh. Now when I play it, the balls follow the shape of the wooden frame. Since the wooden frame can move now, you'll see that it moves and slides as the balls hit the sides. So let's make it heavier by increasing its mass to 10. This is what it looks like now. The wooden frame still moves a little bit, but it's better. Here's a large ball that we'll use to run into the wooden frame. With it selected, click Rigid Body. Make sure the type is set to Active. Change the shape to Sphere. Set the friction and bounciness to 1. Set the mass to 10 to make it equal to the wooden frame. For this object, we're going to check the animated box. This will let us animate it using keyframes, which we'll set up now. So move to frame 61. Then move the ball on the Y axis just out of view and press I and select location. Now move to frame 64. Then move it on the Y axis just out of the camera view window and press I and select location. Next, let's make it move at a constant speed by right clicking on the timeline and select interpolation mode and then linear. Now when I play it, you'll see that the ball stops moving at frame 64. What we're going to do is set this up so that at frame 65, the rigid body simulation will take over using the momentum that was present at frame 64. So move to frame 64. Then right click the animated checkbox and select insert keyframe. This will cause the ball to use keyframe animation up to this point. Now move to frame 65, uncheck animated, right click it and select insert keyframe. This will cause the ball to use the rigid body simulation from this point forward. This is what it looks like now. Next, switch to the Scene tab and click Bake All Dynamics. Now it's ready to render, and this is what the rendered animation looks like. Well that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.